Okay, so I'm gonna talk you through what a module, what the module pattern is, and it's all there's another name for it, which is called self-invoking function. So in essence, what it is is that you create a closure or a function that is immediately evaluated as soon as the browser parses the information. So you can see two examples of doing this here. So you have the old way of doing it, which is with the function like this, and as you can see down here. <coughs> We immediately we put a pair of parentheses around here, and then we immediately call it by using this syntax. So this code will run as, as soon as you hit this this line here in the browser. And the same thing goes for the ES6 syntax. Now, this is something that's not much of a problem if you use a bundler like Browserify or Webpack or something like that. This is happening out like they take care of this for you but if you're using vanilla JavaScript this is great you should be doing this because it solves a very a troublesome problem that's been in the JavaScript community for a long time and I just wanted to touch on what that issue is so you can understand what the module pattern is all about so the problem is that JavaScript in in the browser has what we call a global scope which means that as soon as you put something in a file at the top level like this, if you declare a name, a variable or something like that, that is shared across the in all your files, all of them. So if I declare foo here and then in another file I declare foo, I redeclare it, that's going to break because now you have two declarations with this, this two variables with the same name at the top level of your scope. Now that means that you have to have unique function and like variable names all across your entire application which is a big like that's that's a big hassle so here we're gonna run some code and as we can see here this code would run right away these are the, those two top functions we saw earlier that's this code over here and then we go and hit a one down here so the first one is this foo function here, or sorry, the variable foo here. And then we create a module or a self-invoking function, and then we mutate foo because from inside of here, we can reach out here and actually mutate that value. And as you can see here, there's a two here, which is this line, the, this line here actually. And then there's another two, which is this line here. So you can see that we're actually touching the same, I just put two logs here so that you can see that it's actually the same value that's being logged out, it's being mutated. Now, what you can do, however, is to do try to do something like this. I can try to console log bar, and that's actually gonna break. There's gonna be a reference error. And the reason for this is because you cannot, outside of this self-invoking function, reach into this scope here and touch anything that's inside of here. So if I declare my little variable inside of here, it's a private variable, you can't touch it from the outside. And that's the rule in JavaScript. You can do this, you can nest functions and keep on nesting all you want. Think of it as, uh, th think of it as boxes inside of boxes. So if you have a big box and you put a small box inside of it, the small box, anything that's inside of that small box can reach and get stuff that's in the larger box that's that that it is inside of but the large box can never go inside of the small box and touch anything inside of there that's the rule that's what scoping is all about now let's comment out this again and give you a few concrete examples to actually returning some values from the self-invoking functions or the modules as we call them now you can do something like this you can declare a variable of my dog and then create a module like this and it sets a variable inside of itself it sets a variable name and then a function called bark and then a function called what's my name which basically just reaches up here as you can see remember that box uh, analogy I had so you have this tiny fu this function inside of another function so I can reach name up there from inside of here same thing here this function here can reach it get it up there and then I return an object that holds this information. Now this is just fancy syntax for doing something like that if you're familiar with JavaScript. It's it's ES6 syntax in essence that puts this property uh, on the on this return object. So now I get an object back called my dog that has bark and what's my name. So if I run it, you can see it says woof, and then it logs out what's my name, and with the name, or sorry, my name is Spot, and then it says woof. And you might be asking now, okay, Frederick, I thought you just said that, hey, don't pollute the global namespace because that's why you use self-invoking functions, and I, you're, I agree. 
you shouldn't be doing this type of pattern unless you know what exactly what you're doing but I want you to see that you can do it and there are times when it's actually very useful to be able to do that because some objects or some values you want them to be accessible to everybody just be very careful when you do it so you don't get too many of them up in the global names but because that's as I said you can only have a single name for a global for a global thing and that means that if you have a lot of different global things you're gonna start overriding stuff and that's not good that's gonna create a lot of bugs now I wanted you to see that you can actually do something like this as well you can create a, just an object and then you, you do the same thing without using a self invoking function or a module it's that is also possible however if you wanted to get that the name here from a object like this then you actually have to use the this keyword because you, that's the way that the objects work uh, so that if you want to reference something that's inside of this object you use this dot whatever it is and then you can call meow and that's it no actually I'm completely wrong this will not work because we're using the ES6 syntax sorry about that guys so if I do that that should fix it yes so that's a different discussion but if you use the old way of doing things you do this dot name and this function is now going to log out my name is mittens meow but yeah these are the ways that you can do modules uh, or use the module pattern so just remember this is what you do if you, you're using vanilla javascript and you want to be sure that you can create some code that's not going to get touched by other pieces of code in the global namespace